The Precambrian is by far the longest geological time period, dating from about 4.6 billion to 541 million years ago. This period represents the vast majority of Earth's history, however its age and lack of abundant complex life makes it difficult to understand many of Earth's ancient past. In Michigan's Upper Peninsula, exposed Precambrian rock gives geologists the opportunity to look back into the expansive time period through geological formations, revealing key insights into the state's ancient past. During the Precambrian, life had yet to venture onto land, remaining confined to the ocean. Simple life forms such as early worms, jellyfish, and sea sponges likely represented the extent of complexity during this period. These soft-bodied organisms lacking structures like shells or bones are difficult to fossilize. Because of this, Precambrian rocks rarely yield fossilized plants or animals, with only microscopic fossils being found in Michigan. Rare stromatolites, structures formed by cyanobacteria, have been found along Lake Superior. Other rare fossils such as sea sponges and early relatives of jellyfish dating back to the Precambrian have been discovered in other parts of the world, shedding light on this ancient time. In the absence of fossils, Michigan geologists rely on geological formations to understand the Precambrian. Prolonged volcanic activity in the Michigan area resulted in the formation of igneous rocks. Approximately 1.1 billion years ago, the Mid-Continent Rift formed, stretching from Kansas through Michigan. During this period, the North American continent underwent significant transformation, with the Mid-Continent Rift pouring out massive amounts of lava, forming an 1,800-mile long stretch of flood basalts. These basalt formations are now visible at the surface in the Lake Superior region, providing geologists with a distinctive opportunity to study this phenomenon. The Black Rocks of Marquette are an example of a metamorphic igneous peridotite dating back to over 1.7 billion years ago. These rocks were exposed to immense pressure and heat within the Earth, allowing for a metamorphic transformation to occur due to collisions and interactions within tectonic plates. These factors recrystallized the minerals within the peridotite, resulting in the metamorphic texture. Over time, erosion and weathering allowed for this rock to become exposed at the surface, allowing Black Rock visitors the ability to look back at some of the most ancient rocks in Michigan. One of the most captivating features in Michigan's Upper Peninsula is the Jacobsville Sandstone, a sedimentary rock dating back to around 1,010 to 980 million years ago. This formation is found primarily on the northern side of Michigan's Upper Peninsula at a range of 0 to 1,000 feet in depth and visible along Lake Superior's southern lakeshore. This sandstone formation was created as sand grains were transported through prehistoric rivers flowing northward from the northern Michigan highlands. Over time, these sand grains accumulated and were laid on top of one another. As more sand accumulated, it compressed the lower-lying sediment, compacting it and squeezing out porous space between the grains. Over time, groundwater percolating through this compressed sand precipitated out minerals that naturally cemented together these sand particles, creating sandstone. Geologists can decipher that this sandstone was present in an oxidizing environment, allowing for deposition of hematite, an iron oxide. This deposition is what creates the iconic red coloration of the rock. This sandstone formation has resulted in the Jacobsville Aquifer, covering an area of 4,363 square miles. This huge formation is mostly an unconfined aquifer, meaning that there is no impermeable geological formation between the aquifer and the surface, such as layers of clay. Although this formation is sandstone, which generally has a higher permeability than other rock types like shale, it is naturally well cemented, and water moves through cracks and fissures throughout the formation. The Jacobsville Aquifer has provided huge amounts of fresh drinking water for Michigan residents, with 6.5 million gallons being withdrawn per day at the aquifer's height of use in 1985. This water is mainly divided between public supply, domestic use, and industries. Without the presence of an impermeable layer, unconfined aquifers can allow for easier contamination from the surface. With industry in the area such as mining and agriculture, it is important to monitor and regularly test wells in the area, this testing ensures that the water quality meets the Safe Drinking Water Act regulations and gives Michigan residents access to a reliable and clean water supply. This geological formation has provided another use for humans, as its appealing look has resulted in the quarrying of this sandstone for over two centuries. The late 1800s saw the height of the extraction of this sandstone as 32 quarries were in operation in the area during that time. John Henry Jacobs, a prominent figure in this business, is the namesake for this sandstone in the town of Jacobsville, founded in 1884. The material's great resistance to extreme temperatures, durability, and strength paired with the aesthetic appeal made a very sought-after building material. This sandstone can fittingly be found in numerous buildings in Jacobsville, along with other areas in Michigan, Ontario, and scattered throughout the United States. Michigan's Precambrian rock formations are not only rich in geological history, but also harbor valuable mineral deposits. In 2022, 
Michigan ranked 9th out of the 50 states in total revenue generated from mining. Much of the revenue comes from deposits in the Upper Peninsula, contained in the Precambrian rock formations. Copper, iron, gold, nickel, and silver deposits are all found in Michigan, allowing for these industries to thrive. Even while being the oldest geological period on Earth, the Precambrian remains very influential to people and industries in Michigan.